Good morning. Our call to worship this morning is printed on the inside of your bulletin. I invite you to join me with the words that are printed in boldface lettering. We dare to gather on this, the saddest and most difficult of days, because we believe as generations of Christians before us have believed that <clears throat> even in the face of death, even when life is overwhelming and all seems lost, even in the midst of tragedy and disaster, even the most disheartened people in the most disheartening of times. On the cross, Jesus spoke words that sent a shudder through us, words of total abandonment and hopelessness. Was it really that God had abandoned Jesus? Or was Jesus beginning to recite the words of Psalm 22, which starts off with that horrible feeling that many of us have had at some point or many points in our lives? Let us pray together, starting with the words of Psalm 22, and we will sing, The Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me, from the words of my groaning? Oh, my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but find no rest. Who will care for me, O oh God? Who will care for us when Jesus is gone? Lord, your mercy, Christ, your mercy, Lord, your mercy, who will care for the children, O oh God, the children who are hungry, those who are abused and exploited, those who are lost in systems that don't really have the time or resources to care for them? Lord, your mercy, Christ, your Who will care for the elderly, O oh God, who find themselves alone at the end of their lives, disheartened, disillusioned, and discouraged? Lord, your mercy, Christ, your mercy, Lord, your 
Who will care for the refugees, O God, those who have been forced from their homes by violence, war, poverty, and climate change? Who will care, O oh God, for those who are living in the midst of wars and violence in Ukraine, in Haiti, in Afghanistan, in Iraq, in Nigeria? Who will care, O oh God, for those who have been devastated by earthquakes, hurricanes, tornadoes, drought, disease, and famine? Who will care, O oh God, for those who are living with loneliness, grief, addiction, despair, and depression? Who will care for those who are ill and those who are struggling to make ends meet? Who will care for those who are unhoused, those who are hungry, those who have been abandoned, and those who are searching for hope in their lives. Who will care, O oh God, for this earth as the climate changes and as animals, plants, oceans, land, and atmosphere suffer, who will care for the people devastated by climate catastrophe? And I invite us now to place into God's care all of our doubts and fears, our hopes, our mistakes, our yearnings. And we sing. Lord, your mercy, Christ, your mercy, Lord, your mercy enfolds us all. Who will care when Jesus is gone? Even at the foot of the cross, witnessing the death of the one we love, we will care. We will care when Jesus is gone. We will care because we know that God is with us. We are not alone. Amen.
Good morning. Our first scripture reading this morning is from Mark 14, uh, verses 43 to 51. Immediately, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, and with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. So when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. They laid hands on him and arrested him. But one of those who was near drew a sword and struck the slave, cutting off his ear. Um, then Jesus said to them, Have you come? with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day, I was with you in the temple, teaching, and you did not arrest me. But let the scriptures um, be fulfilled. And all of them deserted him and left. A certain young man was following him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth. They caught hold of him, and he left the cloth and ran away naked. They took Jesus to the high priest, and all the chief priests and elders and the scribes were assembled. 
Peter had followed him at a distance right into the courtyard of the high priest. And he was sitting with the guards, warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. For many gave false testimony against him, and their testimony did not agree. Some stood up and gave false testimony against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another not made with hands. But even on this point, their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But Jesus was silent and did not answer. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? Jesus said, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, Why do we still need witnesses? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? All of them condemned him as deserving death. Some began to spit on him, to blindfold him, and to strike him, saying, Prophesy! The guards also took him over and beat him. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she stared at him and said, You also were with Jesus, the man from Nazareth. But he denied it, saying, I do not know or understand what you are talking about. And he went out into the forecourt. Then the cock crowed, 
And the servant girl, on seeing him, began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. But again, he denied it. Then after a little while, the bystanders again said to Peter, Certainly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. But he began to curse, and he swore an oath. I do not know this man you are talking about. At that moment, the cock crowed for the second time. Then Peter remembered that Jesus had said to him, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and he wept. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered him, You say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. 
Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival he used to release a prisoner to them, anyone for whom they ask. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again. Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, crucify him. Pilate asked them, why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed them, him over to be crucified to be crucified.
Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is the governor's headquarters. And they called together the whole cohort. And they clothed him in a purple cloak. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him. And they began saluting him, Hail, King of the Jews. They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And with him they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him.
The death of Jesus. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Aloy, Aloy, Lema Sabbath. Sabbath, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, Listen, he is calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with wine, and put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come down, come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from the top to the bottom. Now, when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, truly, this man was God's son. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, the younger of the Hoseas and Salome. These used to follow him and provided for him when he was in Galilee. And they were, there were many other women that had come up with him to Jerusalem. When evening had come, and since it was the day of preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, 
who was also himself waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate wondered if he were already dead, and summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he had been dead for some time. When he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. Then Joseph bought a linen cloth and taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth and laid it in a tomb that had been hewn out of rock. He then rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Jesus, saw where the body was laid. Who will care for us when Jesus is gone? Who will care for us? <laughs> 